Greetings, folks. Your friendly neighborhood, Rictus Gate here. And my apologies for taking so long in putting these uh, answers uh, to the questions you posted in my uh, one of my previous videos, my 400 subs celebration video, whatever you want to call it. So these are the answers to the questions. But as you'll see, the questions are not easy ones at all. So that's it took a lot of thinking to uh, go through this. So. Um, I have them uh, timestamped. This is going to be a long video, I think. So I have them timestamped below to what each question is. So you can just click on the question if you're interested in listening to the answer to that question, what I have to say. So I guess uh, onward, upward, sideways, <laughs> whichever way it's going to go. Enjoy. So Live Life 8072 asks, if you could change one thing about humanity, what would that be? Like I said, these aren't simple questions that people are asking me. Um, what would I change? Now, I think there's this whole interconnectedness with uh, life in general, and especially with... Uh, the way our psychology works um, and to change one thing as in remove or um, turn into a 180 degree to the opposite way uh, I think that would have a domino effect too much and, and affects too many other things for example uh, credulity that's let's say let's get rid of that but then where would um, the enjoyment of movies come, uh, the enjoyment of fiction books, uh, the ability to susp suspend reality for the sake of imagination and fiction and such. Um, I think what I would change is our propensity to um, take things to the extreme, to go that extra mile, like Jesus said, go that extra mile and just take it too far it doesn't matter it, this is this goes across the board of uh, human behaviors ideologies whatever they are celebrity worship whatever it might be taking things to the extreme I think that I would like to put a governor on that not take it away all together because um, I think it would affect humanity in general too much so put a governor on that maybe uh, to just bring it down a little. Bring down the extremeness a little, so we don't have uh, well, we don't have 9/11. We don't have uh, soccer soccer hooligans. Um, we don't have genocides. We it just take away these extremes. Um, agreed. Um, I think not take them away. Sorry, but it, it govern govern them. Put a governor on it. So that's my answer. Hope that helps out. So, Mr. Devin Pope asks, What do you think about the Trans Canada Keystone XL pipeline? Um, it's not really Trans Canada, it's more going across Midwest states. There'll be a little map that'll show up here. It'll disappear soon enough. But while you're looking at it, you can see the green line is the phase for proposal. And that's the part that is right now on the shelf. It's, it's uh, That's the proposed line. The rest of it is already in place. Now, what do I think about it? Um, I think the billions of dollars, and I think this is slated seven, eight billion dollars, this proposal, which means you when you add this and that, and those and these and these and that, and those and this, well, that adds up to be about oh, 21, probably 20, 20 billion, ah, let's say 19 billion dollars it'll cost in the end. So if you took that set and, and, and use that money for uh, R&D research, so because we know we need energy, uh, we need the energy that's required, although the states is quite a glutton of it, and that's more to do with your military, 
because they're huge gluttons of it. But um, if we could take that and put it into research and development into alternate sources, solar, whatever, wind, uh, wave power, I think that would be a good thing instead of building this pipeline. Let's get ourselves off the addiction, maybe. Or at least more on the road towards off the addiction. I know this is huge freaking infrastructure that's built around fossil fuels as energy source, but sorry. Civilizations come and things go. Change happens. So I hope that satisfies. Well, Mr. Jeff Heisenberg has to ask, what opinions of yours, if any, have changed directly because of your time on YouTube, and why? Yeah, thanks, Jeff, for the question. Thanks a lot. What opinions have changed? I think I have uh, blunted my more sharp side of my non-belief. I think that's been blunted quite a bit. I've seen a lot more of uh, the human side of people out there that when um, I first joined in that I would typically, um, well, attack in some way, shape, or form. I wasn't necessarily a troll or mean in that way. Uh, it would come to that sometimes, every once in a while, if it came to that. But I've since shied away from that. Um, I think my, uh, since interacting with so many people, different people from all over the world, all different walks of life and stuff, um, I find that, uh, these interactions have changed me in, in a way of, uh, em embracing more of my humanism, I guess, uh, that humanist side that I've always had, uh, that was first kind of brought to light with me, for me, uh, when I started reading Kurt Vonnegut when I was a kid. And, yeah, I mean, like 12, 13, 11, whatever. And it, all these different ideas that uh, Vonnegut would talk about really r r resonate with me. And I lost that a lot, becoming angry and all that kind of stuff, young, angry, punk kid and all that stuff. But it's come back to me, I think. And uh, I'm looking into it a lot more. So that is one thing that has definitely changed. And why? Because I see that it's useful. It's not productive doing the other things. For me, it isn't. For others, whatever floats your boat. But for me, it's not the productive way for me. I prefer to have a dialogue, discussion, whatever it is. And uh, agree to disagree when it happens. Otherwise, everybody just looks foolish to me. Anyways. Hope that helps out. Talk to you later, Jeff. Sit on my face and tell me that you love me. I'll sit on your face and tell you I love you too. I love to hear you all the lies when I'm between your thighs. You blow me away. Sit on my face and let my lips embrace you. I'll sit in your face and then I'll love you truly. Life can be fine if we both 69. We could sit on the faces in all sorts of places and play till we're blown away. So Fishhead Salad asks, what was your thought process and or inspiration that led you to opening a YouTube channel, posting videos and interacting with fellow YouTubers. Well, oh, nigh on six and a half years. It was uh, six years ago in October, this past October, that I started my channel. So it'd be seven years this coming October. That's a while, I guess. Originally, I didn't start to uh, make any content whatsoever. Really. Every once in a while, I put up a video of uh, my photography, let's say, or every once in a while, I would uh, throw uh, some kind of acoustic cover thing up there, whatever it was. Just fooling around, not really saying much. And once in a blue moon, I would, you know, put up some kind of video of, of content, of question, of whatever, a question or addressing something of the great debate. But I opened my channel originally just to leave comments on videos, watch lectures, debates, 
all this kind of stuff, uh, documentaries. That's originally why I started. I didn't really start actually uh, making, deliberately thinking of actually making content until I got a shout out from Logic. No, I think this is when he had 100 or 200. <laughs> 200 subscribers. Now he's got like over 10,000 now, the kid. Crazy, man. So this was a while ago, and, at, and since then I've been putting together content. And, um, now, so many people probably say that, oh, I don't want to put out anything that's already been done. Well, it's hard not to do that. But uh, taking a different angle on things, if possible, that's why you don't hear that much content from me. Because I, I, I just, there's not uh, many other angles that things have been looked at. There are a few here and there, uh, uh, here, that are new, but generally not. Um, I think that's about it. And, and it's grown since then that I want to have actual discussion and dialogue and uh, really pursue that. And I also want to start, as I alluded to my past answer, um, looking more into this humanism and uh, possibly doing some videos on that, discussing that. We'll see. Anyways, thanks for the question and hope that helps out. Talk to you later. And last but not least, we have Mr. Audience Member. So he asks, while avoiding the temptation to infer human emotions and intent onto them, if an alien race were to appear in orbit around our fair planet, do you think it would be passive or a passive visit or one that would interfere with the planet beyond that which appearing would obviously do? I remember being in a hangout a while ago that we kind of discussed this, and it was... Uh, kind of interesting because there was somebody there who said that, well, since uh, as we have become more evolved or whatever, as we've progressed, we've become more peaceful. There could be an argument made for that. So uh, more advanced, we become more peaceful. So uh, a very highly, 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 highly advanced race would, of course, be that much more peaceful. Now... I don't know. This is where you're you're going into the realm of pure speculation, because I mean, you could have a, a race of aliens that were set in caste system that were highly, highly um, advanced. Let's say you had a caste system of the ones who who were scientists and such who developed weaponry, and then you had a caste that uh, deployed that weaponry, and that, who who was orbiting our planet. Who knows? Very advanced, very uh, ordered, very almost a hype kind of thing. Who knows? That could be an idea. Or maybe uh, it'd just be a flyby and they just see us as just another species on this planet. Not really worth looking at. I really don't know. This is such a. This is where speculative fiction comes in and some science fiction. And such. Usually it ends up being something really aggressive and bad, usually. Which is, of course, makes for a good movie. I guess the peaceful thing would make for such a good movie. But anyways, um, yeah. We could host a whole hangout about that. Host at most of a hangout about that, like I said. It's a very interesting question. Speculation. Interesting place to go. Rabbit holes, rabbit holes, rabbit holes. Well, I hope that helps out. We'll talk to you folks later. Thanks a lot for uh, subbing, and thanks for everybody for the new subscribers. Yay. Yay me. I am the wiener. Salute.